years, I've accumulated a bunch of really weird stuff in my home. And I feel like instead of just letting that stuff sit there, it might be fun to do really small videos where I just pick one strange thing in my house and make one perfect little small video telling the story of that thing. And I couldn't think of a better place to start than my vinyl collection. So I've accumulated a lot of really weird, really specific vinyl records that feel like things that maybe only I would care about, like this promo soundtrack for Driver San Francisco on vinyl. Uh, something I didn't notice until recently is that the actual, the actual disc is yellow, like a, a plausible stand-in for the yellow of Tanner's car in that game. I've also got this vinyl exclusive episode of the comedy podcast Hollywood Handbook, this vinyl reprinting of the Sonic Spinball soundtrack, which let me tell you, you have not really experienced the Sonic Spinball options menu music, that ear blistering song until you've heard it, you know, perfectly replicated in vinyl. I actually have not played this yet, so actually let's try that. Are you ready? You ready for one of the most powerful pieces of music ever written? Very ready. I don't think you are. The way that melody is just off key completely. Creepy carnival vibe. I know it is, it's giving scary clown. But I think ultimately the, the pride and joy of my record collection, at least for now, has to go to this, this Windows 95 soundtrack on vinyl. This is, I guess what you would call the full soundtrack of Windows 95, including the 3.25 second startup sound that was composed by the legendary sort of ambient musician slash record producer, Brian Eno. Uh, Microsoft, at kind of the height of their, their powers, of their OS dominance, they commissioned a insanely overqualified guy to make a 3.25 second song for them. There's actually this interview going back to like 1998 from this magazine, SFGate, it's still on their website, where the writer asked Brian Eno about the process of writing the Windows 95 startup song. And he said that the message from Microsoft's agency that came into him had this list of adjectives. It was like, uh, the song, we want a piece of music that is inspiring, universal, optimistic, futuristic, sentimental, emotional. And then at the end of it, they said, by the way, it has to be 3.25 seconds long. But that he actually really loved the process. He said that he wrote like 80 something pieces of music, I think, and spent a lot of time on it and really enjoyed getting in the headspace of making a really short piece of music. Um, and of course, I think we all know what he wound up making is pretty legendary. So this, let's, let's take a close look at this here, actually. It says here that this vinyl contains the Microsoft sound, of course. Chimes.wave, chord.wave, ding.wave, um, all these kind of class, ta-da.wave, and then canyon.midi. It's actually got canyon.midi, password.midi, and clouds.midi. I'm sad that there's no in the hall of the Mountain King. I spent a lot of time as a kid, like, literally going to search in Windows a sadly depreciated feature and just searching for MIDI or WAVE and listening to all the stuff that was pre-installed because I didn't have a lot of games, so I would just listen to those for fun. Um, but yeah, it's, there's also, I love this, the back of the vinyl is covered in photos from the kind of hype era of people excitedly buying Windows 95. We've got this guy here holding up two boxes of it, people with the laptops, a lot of great promotional photos of Bill, and then crucially, the soundtrack from the classic games Hover and Pinball, which came pre-installed with Windows 95. Anyways, let's spin this up because I'm I'm dying to hear how this this transfer was done. And oh, I actually haven't looked. So I actually hadn't taken a look at this, but here's the uh, here's what we've got here: the complete sounds of Windows 95. So we'll give this a spin. And I'm sure you have a lot of questions about why this exists, whether this is real. Uh, where this came from, I will answer all of those, but first I think we should listen to, at the very least, the Windows theme composed by Brian Eno. And maybe a little bit of the pinball music, too. It's happening. It's a nice sound. Oh! We're getting some errors. We're clicking on some windows that... 
Oh, no, it's, we also finished uh, exporting something from Windows Movie Maker. These are all, these are all Microsoft Plus themes here. These are mostly just sound effects for the rest of this disc, I think. Yeah. All right, side B of this record, I think, is where all the MIDI files are. <laughs> this, I, I really like the idea of owning MIDI files on vinyl. There's something really, really stupid about that. Because it's a pretty, if you think about it, it's a really lossy way to store like a, a perfectly digital medium. But all right, who's, on, who's up first here? Oh, hell yeah. This is a very good song. This rules. I don't know who composed Canyon.midi, but it objectively fucking slaps. Kind of a, like a tonal change here. What kind of what what vibe do you get from this, Ryan? I don't, like a very cozy settling in for a, a for a nice show. Yeah, yeah, like a like a Cheers or like a, some sort of like a sitcom where like yeah, ah the Brady Bunch. Yeah, like oh my all my favorite guys are here. You could definitely see the opening title credits that's like freeze framing on each of the members of the cast and popping up the actor's name. I don't think there's a more era-appropriate sound Truly. than this song. This is the ultimate 1995 MIDI. And what I love about this vinyl, this didn't have to be on there. It could have just been, you know, the Windows theme. Yeah, I was very surprised to hear an actual song and not mm -hmm. the sound effects. It's true. It makes it a little more functional, too. Interesting. That's a great inclusion. Yo. It's so Commander Keen vibes. This is what the Peggle 1 soundtrack sounded like. Ooh. Holy fuck. the name of this song? You think I can Shazam it? Don't give up, buddy. This is tough, it says. Well, I wonder if the... Oh, no, there it went! Yo, Passport.midi. Wow. 40 Shazams. This has been Shazammed 40 times. This song is cool as shit, too. This is great. So, that last song was from Hover, a uh, a game that shipped with the OS that, for whatever reason, I don't remember playing. The music rocks, though. There's definitely some George and Jonathan energy to, to this. So, where this vinyl came from, that's a really interesting story. I think its it feels plausible to me that Microsoft, at the peak of their Windows 95 hype, would have released a vinyl record. They paid a really expensive composer to make it. They put all this energy and effort into it. Um, but that's not actually what happened. So if you look closely in the lower right corner here, you can see this logo of a brand called Legboot. Legboot is a, I don't know how you would describe what this fool does. Hold on, we're about to get, we're getting the pinball song. I got to interrupt myself. I think I had a different sound blaster on my PC as a kid because I remember this sounding a little differently, which makes sense, right? A MIDI is just instructions and then the sound card plays back those instructions. So the version of this I'm nostalgic for might have been on a different sound card. Or maybe it just doesn't sound as good as I remember. I guess it could be either one. That's an ambitious time signature. I'll say that. 
a really clumsy loop there normally, but not in this version. Anyways, this vinyl is a bootleg made by a brand known as Leg Boot. It's a, as best I can tell, a single creator uh, who has a website, legboot.com, where uh, they s manufacture and sell a lot of like silly bootleg merchandise. Not this though. I think crucially, everything Leg Boot makes is well within the realm of parody, you know? It's still like, protected by fair use and parody law. This isn't. And the way this vinyl came across my radar was actually on Leg Boots TikTok. On my TikTok For You page, I was scrolling and I saw somebody pull out a Windows 95 vinyl and I was like, well, that's insane and I need to own that. And this is one of those rare situations on the internet where like you go look into something and not only do you have like an exact answer instantly on what it is and why it exists, but full instructions on how you can also make one. Essentially what Leg Boot did here is they created this cover art, this background art, the art on the vinyl itself that's spinning there, and a folder with all the WAV files you would need for this. And then they use this website called Kunaki where you can upload like the images for a vinyl record and all the WAV files for a vinyl record and you can print like a one of one vinyl of anything basically. But anyways, there's this, there's this really great blog post that explains how to go about printing your own copy of this. Uh, Leg Boot really graciously provided a zip file with all the wave files and midis in one place and the album art. So if you want one of these, it's pretty painless to go get your own printed. Um, so yeah, that is the story of why I have the complete soundtrack of Microsoft Windows 95 uh, on a vinyl record. Hey, I saw you looking at my table. I saw you looking at my insane table that I have here. If you were like me and you saw this table in this video, you'd be like, what's that table? And you'd wanna know what the table was. This table is a table called the Sisyphus Coffee Table by Sisyphus Industries. It is a table where underneath glass, you've got a layer of sand and a magnetically controlled marble. Look at this bad boy. That is through a combination of magnets and robotics is being guided around drawing different patterns on the table. And this is one of my favorite objects in the world. I think even if they weren't the sponsor of this video, if this was in my house, this would be the first thing I made one of these videos about because it is like the coolest object in this house. To the point of like, it's too powerful. It is, <laughs> it's too good. I could fully just watch this all day long. It's, I, I've had friends come over and immediately, of course, it's the first thing they ask about. And then they proceed to spend the next half hour, like half listening while I talk about it, while they're just kind of staring at it, hypnotized, which is understandable. It's a very hypnotic thing. It's happening to me right now. Like as we speak, I'm, as we speak, I'm kind of just being hypnotized by the table. Whew. So there's all these great designs that are like built into the table that it comes with, but there's also a Sisyphus app for your phone where community members can post and have posted like thousands and thousands of user generated designs. You can also draw your own if you want, either within the app or with external software and then bring it in. But by and large, I have just kind of let it run. I've set up a few playlists. There's the ability to like favorite ones that you really like. And so if there's one that I see when I'm walking through, I'll like, favorite it in the Sisyphus app and it adds it to a playlist called favorites. I've got like 10 in there now. Yeah, there's these featured ones up at the top. And so usually I'll just like let one of these run. And then you can also just kind of let it autoplay. The thing I like most about this table, honestly, has been coming out into this room at various times throughout the day or in the middle of the night and just seeing it going, seeing like what insanely complicated geometry. It's been like quietly, slowly etching into this table for the past few hours. And then at the end of each one, it does this like erase pattern where it spirals all the way into the middle uh, to just kind of wipe the slate clean before going on to the next drawing. Sisyphus also makes a lot of varieties of this table. So this is the coffee table one, which I feel like is the appropriate size for my apartment, but they make bigger and smaller versions of the Sisyphus, various wood finishes and stuff. If you want to learn more about Sisyphus Industries and this amazing table that they sent me, uh, you can and head to the link in the description. You'll be helping support the channel by doing so if you end up buying one. Um, personally, I, I thought this was gonna be cool and it is 
500 times cooler than I thought it was gonna be. It is hands down my favorite object in this house, which is saying a lot, because I got a lot of really ridiculous stuff in this house. But yeah, I love this, I love this thing. If my apartment was on fire and I could only save one thing, I would be dragging this enormous table down the stairs behind me. You can take that to the bank. It's powerful. Powerful words, powerful image to think about. I could think of it on your back like a turtle shell. Mm hmm Or, you know, maybe I'll push it like Sisyphus did with his oh. marble, you know? Roll it up the hill, and then it rolls down the other side of the hill, and then I gotta go get it again. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Poetic. Ha, ha, ha.